Hello and welcome back to your one-stop shop for all motocross news from around the world. No matter whether it is the Super Motocross World Championship MXGP or the various national championships that are run in different corners of the world, we will endeavour to shed some light on the goings-on in different continents because remember, interesting stuff happens everywhere. First off this week, let's travel to Seattle round 11 of 2024 Monster Energy Supercross to tackle some of the interesting storylines to arise inside of Lumen Field. Of course, that event was not the mudder that it was expected to be. In fact, it turned out to be a great race. It was not a great race for Eli Tomac, however. For the third successive week, Tomac missed the top five, and that has not happened since late 2016, rounds 12 to 14 of that season. This has caused me to ponder a question that I will put to you, the viewers, now. Tomac is currently on 99 podiums in the 450SX class. The big 100 is right around the corner. Will he get there before? The conclusion of 2024 Monster Energy Supercross though? Consider that he hasn't really had a sniff of the podium since Daytona, mainly because his starts have been so terrible. The worrying factor here is that there has been no sign of improvement with his starts since the series arrived in Alabama. And I am certain that he, as well as the Monster Energy Yamaha star racing team, are scratching their heads to find a solution to get him out of the gate better. Another interesting Tomac point to consider is the graph on screen now. This highlights the amount of times that he has missed the top five in a single season. As you can see, the most that he has missed the top five in one year is six times. That is also the number of times that he has missed the top five this year already. If he is to miss the top five one more time across the remaining six rounds, this will be his most unsuccessful season in that regard. It's just more bench racing fodder for the fans who are trying desperately to understand whether Tomac's return to Monster Energy Supercross can be deemed a success or not. Of course, what transpires in the coming weeks will help everyone reach a verdict on that. A win will certainly go a long way, and for Tomac's mentality as well. Talking to him recently, it's quite clear that the fact that he hasn't had a single win yet is causing him to scratch his head a little bit. Sticking with the Monster Energy Yamaha star racing team, Jordan Smith hogs headlines in the 250SX class. He had a horrid crash around the halfway point and watched his title hopes evaporate. It sure looks like he was dealing with a concussion or some sort of head injury, but he quickly tackled social media in the hours after the race to confirm that he was pulled into the Alpine Stars medical rig for a concussion test, and the results came back clear. Concussion or not, the way that he rode after the crash was quite concerning. It was clear that he was not the complete package, as it were. Whether that was because his emotions were running high as he watched his title hopes flash before his very eyes, or maybe he was just so flustered from such a hard fall that he couldn't think straight. It was certainly a concern, as he almost cleaned out title contender RJ Hampshire when returning to the track a lap down. A lot of people called for a black flag, but of course no penalty or disqualification was handed down. A penalty was given to Ryder Di Francesco in the same race so. Ryder D crashed in the first rhythm section just before the second turn, and when he remounted aboard his MC250F, he cut the corner. Although he did not gain two positions, the officials deemed that he did gain an advantage, and so they took two positions from him. That is why he was ranked in 13th at the end of the night. Jumping across to Europe now, and round two of MXGP was run at Into Xanadu, a relatively new venue to the FIM Motocross World Championship in Spain, of course, and Glenn Koldenoff, sticking with penalties, was disqualified from the second moto. He crashed in a corner before the finish line and took a little while to get going. In that time, he received some outside assistance and so he was disqualified. He only finished 20th in the race, so he was only robbed of a single point, but still, Never nice to have your hard work undone by the officials. 
Sticking with the Fantic Factory racing team, his former teammate Rowan van der Mostijk, of course split from Fantic in the days after Patagonia Argentina. It was quite messy and it seemed as though it was going to go down the legal route, but both parties released a joint statement earlier this week, effectively confirming that the matter has been closed, there will be no further comment from either side, and Rowan is free to join another team whenever the opportunity presents itself. That could be quite soon. You see, Ruben Fernandez, Team HRC's second rider in the MXGP class, tore his ACL in Patagonia, Argentina. It was initially thought that he just sustained an ankle injury in a crash in the qualification heat, but it turned out to be a torn ACL and he had surgery earlier this week on Tuesday, March the 26th, and that should sideline him for the foreseeable future. It is heavily rumoured that Rowan van der Mostijk will be a fill-in rider for the team. What about the Fantic seat that he has left vacant? Well, that is expected to be taken by fellow Dutchman Brian Bogers. He is expected to debut for Fantic at the next round in the bottomless sand of Rio Lasado. Rio Lasado, of course, is considered by most to be even more difficult than Lommel. Consider that. Sticking with that theme, Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP's Maxime Renault has withdrawn from 2024 MXGP. You may remember that he suffered a foot injury at this Grand Prix one year ago. Well, despite the fact that he had surgery and went through the necessary rehabilitation, the pain in his foot has not gone away. And so the difficult decision was made by him, as well as the team, to step aside, have another surgery and hope that it alleviates the pain somewhat because it was holding him back not just on the track but off of it as well. So many people have commented about the fact that he was visibly limping around practice tracks in the winter. So what will Yamaha do? Because they are of course without Yago Geertz as well. Geertz, their second 450 rider, sustained multiple injuries at the opening round of MXGP. It is also rumoured that Todd Kelly, a beach racer, will make a one-off appearance for the factory team at the next round in Sardinia. Of course, a bottomless sand motocross track and a beach race are quite different, but Yamaha are obviously hoping that the skills are somewhat transferable and he will have a positive showing to back up Calvin Vlanderin, the last man standing on Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP. Another bit of injury news from MXGP, Josh Gilbert, a name you may recognize from his foray in the Pro Motocross series, he has been diagnosed with a cracked radius in his arm. That is why he did not compete in the two motos in Spain. There is no timeline on his recovery as of yet. In more British news, Tommy Searle, a name recognizable to all of you, of course, he races exclusively in the British Championship now, and although he was pegged to compete in the MX1 class, he made the decision last week to step down to the 250 and chase an MX2 title. Of course, he never actually won the MX2 class in the British Championship. He came up one or two points short on two occasions. He races for the Dirt Store Kawasaki team and his teammate, Mel Pocock, another recognizable name, friend of Zach Osborne, had a horrific crash over the weekend. He crushed the C7 in his neck and has had multiple surgeries on his wrist, so he will be out for quite some time. Well wishes to Mel Pocock and all of the injured riders. It seems as though injuries are running rampant, in Europe especially, at the moment. So what lies ahead this weekend? Well, St. Louis round 12 of 2024 Monster Energy Supercross will hog headlines. It is a triple crown, it is a dome, we don't need to worry about weather, and it is another chance for the 250SX West contenders to show what they are made of. Levi Kitchen of course made quite the statement in Seattle, so for him to back that up this weekend would be quite advantageous to his title hopes. There is no MXGP round this weekend. They are on a weekend off before traveling to the Italian island of Sardinia next weekend. That's all for this week. Thank you for tuning in to this new feature on Vital MX. Your positive feedback has been much appreciated and we will strive to make this better each and every week. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Lewis Phillips, and we will see you at the same time next week for your one-stop shop for all motocross news.